to see you, see you. Oh, oh look at that. Jolting defence from Big Jerry. See you, see you. It's easy as you want. And he scores over the black dot. Over the 20 metre line and looking for support. Now, see you, see you. Going forward, looking to offload. Did offload. See you, see you on the inside. Gets it back to Stacey Jones. Oh, he's gone straight through. Big Jerry with the punch and a try to Mark Turkey. Now Monty Beaton. Got the arms free. Ball back inside to see you, see you. Who scored the try? Back to see you, see you. Big Jerry goes long and hard. He's a bulldozer. Jess, you watch that. Uh, what memories does that bring back? Or how does it make you feel? Uh, crazy, actually, um, to think that um, I, I was that skinny once upon a time. Once, no, it's um, it's it's good. It's uh, just privileged. I, I feel like um, yeah, it was a bit of a blur, but at the same time, some you know some really good memories. Um, playing in the jersey, uh, the friendships that were made, and, and you know some of the journeys that we went on as as teams over the years. Um, you know, when you get to pull on the jersey. Uh, it's just um, that the guys around you would be proud that, hey, yeah, you did your job and contributed to, mm. you know, what our overall uh, goal was. And, um, yeah, it just represented the peeps, you know, uh, the family, um, South Auckland, and, um, and, and more importantly, you know, uh, God and, and the Christian community. Domestically, 95, 96, Lion Red Cup, and measure up you did, bro. Uh, player of the year, outstanding. Uh, talk to me about that, because uh, uh, the jet, when you came to... To the Warriors Club, uh, mm. was it accidental uh, rugby league career, or was it something you always planned for? A massive accident, I think. Once um, when I look back, um, um, because you know, beginning of '95, uh, I was I was 20 and I was turning 21 that year, and I thought I just want to go back to Mangere East Hawks and win the 21s again, you know, with my yeah. mates. And so, you know, that was the whole um, beginning of the year, kind of a drive thing. And so, yeah, it was the um, the grand final. We, we just um, beaten Waitakere Rangers um, and, and it was Carlo Park, you yes. know, 1996 and um, September 40 would have been. And, and then uh, big old happy Frank, he, he come up to me and he says, hey, I'm coaching reserves next year. I'd like you to be part of my team. And, I, I remember seeing the smile and, and, then the, and then the stomach and then the man that was Happy Frank. So he was the first one that, um, that gave us an opportunity to come and join the club. So it was freaky that by October, uh, the very next year, 1996, um, there, there I was signing a contract and, and being introduced to, um, around the team. It was the off season and I remember seeing Steve Kearney there and I'm, Part of me was like, wait, this Steve Kearney, like, oh, well, you know, inside it. But, you know, you just try and act cool way and just waltz up and say, hey, how's it going? You know, those ones. But, um, but yeah, so it was a bit of an accidental um, trip into the high performance space. But, you know, one that I, I'm very thankful for. And, and obviously a lot of people have thanked along the way that, that helped me to get yeah. there and, and uh, sort of push me along. So, you know, always thankful months for, you know, the experience that was uh, professional rugby league. 1998. Signed a full-time contract. I was there in 1997, my first year as one of the protected juniors. Uh, I saw you around the place, but it wasn't until 98 that you were full-time. But talk to me about uh, signing full-time and then being around some of these guys that used to be on the wall, mate. Oh, you don't strike yeah. me as a poster guy, you know. Nah, it was funny, eh, Mond? Um, we went from getting $100 a week at the county's Manukau for the win, and then they said, oh, we're going to sign you, and here's $15,000 um, yeah. to sign on as a reserve grade player. And another five grand if you um, play first grade, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, <laughs> sweet. In my mind, I'll get, oh, right, okay, so yeah. And if I play more games, they say, yeah, we'll give you two. What was it? Uh, two grand for a win, another grand just yeah, for making an appearance yeah. after that. And I was thinking, man, I'm in the money. No, nah. I thought, wow, this is cool, you know. And so, uh, so that changed, and then. Yeah, so uh, I managed to debut against uh, the Western Reds, I think it was. The debut was funny because I, um, you know, you, you're excited and you just want to hit the ball up. So I, I hit the ball up, eh, uh, when I come off the bench, right? And so uh, I'm hitting the ball up. I say, yeah, hit me the ball. As I catch the ball, I turn and there's Mark Guy right in front of me. And I'm like, oh, she's Mark Guy, state of origin prop. So anyway, I thought, ah, what the heck? So, <laughs> so man, there's an all massive collision, eh? And then, uh, you know, you sort of lose it for, for like a split second. Um, and then you come back to, and then, hey, there's my guy on the ground. So I was like, oh, sweet. <laughs> Maybe I might do all right in this game. So, and then after that, they said, hi, why don't you come join us full time, 98? 
Uh, I think the first offer was, it was like a 100K package, uh, but you earned most of it. Uh, I think it was a, it was a 60K um, base anyway. Mm. Um, so, you know, that was kind of uh, life changing in a way. Eh? You go from uh, a student loan and eating noodles and toast to <laughs> getting by with your mates. Bit of eating two, two bowls of noodles well, and exactly. four toast. And a bit of tomato sauce and cheese on the toast. Yeah, no, so it was, it, was, it was kind of neat that way in terms of the opportunity. And I suppose this was the reason why the club was made so that, you know, we could stay home um, and, and play rugby league and, and I suppose get a little bit of a reward for it. So, uh, again, oh man, 98. <laughs> I'm looking around the table and going, man, I'm in a team with like the Kiwis because basically it was like the Kiwis team. Right? You had Kevin Edel, you had um, Tia Road Party, Matthew Ridge was in the team, um, Sean Hoppy, you know, and then the forward pack, you had Quinton Pongia, Tyrone Smith come across, you know, because that Super League war was on, eh? And so the boys were all cashed up. I remember thinking, man, we're going to slay it this year. Uh, but I, I didn't realise that, that half the boys packed their... Um, they're going out gears before their training get there. <laughs> no, so it was crack up. Was um, it was she's a bit of a good times roller coaster '98, but um, yeah. but you know there was a lot going on in the game at the yeah. time. But 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 nonetheless, it was I was just grateful for the opportunity and chance to get out. You there. mentioned Frank, happy Frank. Uh, he brought you to the club in terms of he spotted you. He knew that mm. he was a guy up front. Uh, '97, '98, he was there. He, we haven't heard much about Frank on, on the show in terms of a coach. What type of coach was he? Yeah, well, Happy Frank probably suits him. He was—he was always uh, he tried to bring that positive attitude and and try to keep that, um, you know, that mindset about you know a positive outlook to everything. Uh, so you know, I suppose that was uh, Frank's strength. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, and I noticed he leaned a lot on on some of the senior players, the likes of Matthew Ridge, who wasn't short of an opinion. Um, and so you know, that was that was that was Frank. Um, always grateful for his opportunity. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I, um, I remember talking to Dave Solomon and um, he, his experiences were different. Um, yeah. And Dave used to tell me how, you know, he, he'd always wished that he'd, he'd been able to stay at the Warriors. The fact that he never got uh, a shot in this Warriors jumper, it's, it's just, that still hurts me to this day. Man, he was an absolute talent, Dave. Eh? He was a go-to player. I, you can only imagine what would have happened if it was Dave Sol and on one edge and, and Ali on the other. You know, man, he probably would have been unstoppable. But you know, probably not the first young talent to leave the club and, and make it good elsewhere, but um, definitely one that maybe the club should have hung on to. Your opportunity under Mark Graham, uh, because I mean, another hero for us, Jess, yeah. right? No, well, that, that was, it, was, it was different again under Mark, because eh? um, I liked his ethos to training and, um, um, you know, I got to the club and, and all, the, all the front rowers were like, benching 200 and, and, and squatting 250 and you know, so they're all big powerful humans eh? so I knew I needed a bit more of a running game kind of a prop so so for me that was where I sat um, but at the time also you know 2000 it was unlimited interchange so I don't know that I suited um, where the game was at that time man it was hard um, and although I had some good pre-seasons um, we, we did struggle under, under Mark but I give him credit for this, uh, Mons. Yeah. I reckon come 2001, man, I was the fittest I'd ever been because of those two years under yeah. Mark. Eh? Or in Trevor, uh, Clark and Sam Panapa, they probably had something to do with it. Uh, although I do remember saying to Sam, where's the, where's the sports science in this? <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, man, we were, we, were getting, we were getting caned. I eh? think it was just called overload. Overload. Uh, well, over, Mental uh, toughness. I'll tell you what, I was over it myself. But, um, yeah, so that was, that was interesting times under Mark. Um, um, and it had some classic sayings, eh? One, one funny memory I have of, of uh, the Mark Graham era was, um, uh, we, we must have watched any given Sunday with um, oh, yeah. Al Pacino like three or four times or something for motivation or, it's a game of inches, you know, so <laughs> it yep. became ingrained in the memory, eh? So anyway, so um, hard man and, uh, you know, uh, Taught us a lot about mental toughness, uh, thought mm. Mark. So, um, and, and some good times too. Who were the guys in the 90s uh, that had an influence on your career? Who were they? Name them and, and how and, and what you liked about them. Yeah, well, you know, Quinton Pongia, the late um, uh, Quinton Pongia, he, um, he was the first one because I remember watching him play for Canberra, you know, and he mm. stood out, eh? He was that guy, you know, when you watch a game, you're like, oh, fuck, who's that guy? So then when he arrived at the club in 98, he, he was he was cool too because he sort of took me under his wing and said, "Look, 
used to always prefer to like, I hate these Aussies. This is what we're going to do. You know, and so he had that kind of <laughs> mentality, you know, and then... You um, know, Jerry, nothing's changed because I played a, a, a game back with Q probably maybe six, seven years ago. Yeah. Same speech. <laughs> same speech. Still hated people. Loved them off the field, but yeah. in terms of being an opponent against them and him potentially taking something from you, uh, mate, it, it was the same. But what a joy to, to play yeah. uh, on, on the same side with, you know. He, he was amazing. Oh, he was, he was. I, I, man, I really admired Q for just for giving us the knowledge. Um, but then guys like Joe Vangana, you know, Joe, um, he was the guy at the time, you know. He, he, he was giving me all the headlines and that. But what I admired about Joe was, um, you know, because, you know, would would line up with some um, some of the Aussie props and, and man, they, they really guarded their positions, eh, you know. Yeah. Um, they were really um, jealous to, you know, to compete with you, even at training. But, um, but I found Joe good because Joe would go, hey, how about you try this? Or, you know, if you do this that way, then, uh. you know, you'll find this a little bit easier. So, you know, I, I always respected Joe for, you know, for allowing us to have that kind of relationship. And then finally, uh, the last one is uh, The Rock, Terry Hermanson. Uh, he, oh. w- he was the one in the Mark Graham era. Um, because Terry couldn't run because yeah, he had the bad <laughs> knees. I shouldn't laugh, but yeah, he did. Yeah, Maybe but he did those massive as 110 kg power cleans yeah. and... Um, yeah, and he was the same. He'll be like, this is how you dominate. This is how you own the middle of the field. And so, you know, he was cool like that too. So, you know, some, some names here. But again, you know, I didn't do it on myself. Um, a lot of guys here, leaders that helped me along the way. Mm. Well, you've, you've come out and said some of the Aussie guys who wouldn't give you some help. So you're going to have to name a couple of them now. And, and we mean that with all due respect. Yeah, well, you know, there's um, no, I, I can't do it. Much. I can't. <laughs> oh, Jerry, but see, see. You ask any former player, and they'll, they'll they'll have the names for you. Daniel Anderson was on the show, and as we know, over the years, we always have a running joke within the team: "Oh, uh, that's your dad, or your, you know, your 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 Ando son." But I didn't realise that Ando picked you when he was on the show the other day as uh, one of his most valuable ever. I didn't realise you were a son of his, Jess. <laughs> My, you know, it's amazing how it must be the reach of your show. I keep getting all these tweets and about and um, texts about and snippets of of him saying that, and because I actually missed the show live, and um, and, and I appreciate that about Daniel. He, he was by far the best coach that I had, um, technically, eh? Uh, and I, I think um, and my style of play suited his game plan as well. So I think it was always a nice fit naturally, um, because. After 2000 and the unlimited interchange, 2001, it was almost like if you landed on your front, you had all the rights in terms of the play the ball. And so, you know, I, I happened to, um, it happened to suit my play down to a T. And so, you know, I tend to, I, I thrived under that. Um, and he was funny, um, and OA, um, you know, obviously he had a blow up in him and, and probably could have used an emotional regulator. Um, oh, Endo, but um, I thrived under him. And he was an interesting guy because he had come up to me and you're, He'll do those psychology. I look back now and I see, oh, it was actually quite uh, strategic of him, mate. Yeah. He'd, he'd be like, hey, um, that guy there, State of Origin prop, he goes, mate, you're way better than him. You know, he'd do those ones. Mm. And he'll be like, oh, this guy's online for the Kiwis, but man, look at his stats last week. You're, he's terrible. You, you, you win this game, we, if you win this battle, we'll win the game. He'll be doing yeah, those yeah. ones to me. When you think about the prop rotation that we had, um, mm. You know, there was a number of you guys playing so well because what you guys would do up front uh, really made a difference for our side. I think it was, it was a bit of, um, it was just the team, eh, Mont? Because you try and do a tip sheet on that team and, man, there were threats everywhere, you yeah. know? Was it the left edge or was it um, Logan's side with Henry down there? Was it the fullback? Was it the middles? You know, you sort of had to watch the whole team. Can eh? you just tell people what a tip sheet is and how often you didn't use it? Yeah, so every game you prepare like notes on the opposition. Hey, here are their main dangers. This is where they bring all their strike, you know. You might have three or four pointers. But that's what I'm saying about our team at that time. Man, everyone was a threat, hey, you know. Um, especially that left edge. But um, but I, I, I like playing with Tukes. Tukes was a kind of guy, he, man, he was hard to turn, eh? And, and could, mm. and put a lot of volume on the field. So it was very easy to get organised. And then the likes of yourself and PJ Marsh um, meant that we were very organised in the middle lane, you know, and we were always um, a threat there. So, you know, uh, the fact that Stacey was playing at the time uh, was massive, eh, because he was just threats everywhere, you know. You had to watch his, uh, all the inside, you know. Um, and so uh, Stace was a constant um, and, you know, always thankful for Stace because, um, he should have been player of the year in 2001, if truth be told. So, um, yeah, so good time. How many years you get it? 
No, I got nominated by the boys in 2001. But hands down, come on. We watch all the tapes. Only because they uh, probably took man. it for granted. You're a humble man, Jerry yeah. Sue. You're a humble man. What was your mindset when you crossed that white line? And what were you doing off the field? And, you know, everyone thinks props is all about force and brutality. But obviously, it was later on in life when I realised, geez, you, you're a very bright man. Uh, and you're doing a lot on your own uh, performance and enhancing that. So what made you so special, Jerry? No, well, I wouldn't say that much. I don't know if I was special. It was um, more just lucky in, in, in one sense. Um, you know, but, but a couple of people I attribute that to, I had some mentors, and um, you know, they come out of the Christian community, and, and first out of the Bible Baptist Church, and then the Maori School Evangelical uh, Church, you know, men that taught me, you know, this is what it looks like to be a man, you know, and, mm. and it was, and a lot of it was just to give 100% in everything that you do all the time. So, you know, whether it was study, whether it was, um, whether it was just washing the dishes or doing your chores, or my wife might disagree, but, or, or you know, playing league. And so then, and, and added to that, the mindset that, um, you know, if you do it all for God's glory, then he'll bless that. Uh, you know, that was the principle. You go out there and you just lay your life on the line, you know, every single time. Can I, can I say, when you say, you know, you mentioned God-like and you mentioned mm. life on the line, um, man, uh, it was like on occasion playing with a caveman. Uh, um, barbaric, um, making noises that um, I didn't realise were part of the game of rugby league. But it was it was great to watch you, mate. You were getting into it and you were throwing your body into it and you had a, an intensity and an aggression uh, level in you uh, that you would never show off the field. You were just a humble man. So the mindset when you crossed that line, what, what, what was going on? Because when you switched, man, you were yeah. one dangerous man. No, that's right, Mike. Well, that's the point, eh? Like, when you cross that white line, we know it's on now, eh? It's game on. It's time to um, time to go to war, as we used to say, eh? You know? And so, you know, that was the mentality. Different coaches had different triggers, too, you know? There was the um, the dog mentality, you know? You're going to be like a ravenous dog. You're just going to go out there, rip and tear everything. That was, you know, that kind of um, uh, mindset in terms of uh, the approach to the game. Um, and so... You know, we took that on board and, and tried as best as we could, really, uh, just for uh, our team and, mm. and for the coach. But, um, but you know, and plus, you know, uh, being from, from Whangali and from Tangaro College, you know, there's part of that in the genetics, eh? What? <laughs> I'm saying, you know, when you, grow, when you go to a school and you're in fights from third form to seventh form, you know, it's, it's, it, it puts you in, in good stead in terms of the contest. You know, I grew up in South Auckland, the son of a widow, so, you know, you, uh, you, you know you're resilient in many ways, so... Mm. And, you know, going to Tangaroa College, you play 50 on 50 bull rush, you know, <laughs> one out. So, you know, it was, it was sort of in the, in the, um, in the DNA, just, just like, liking the thrill of rugby league and, and wanting to um, bash one, you know, so, you know, just compete with other, other guys that were keen on rugby league as well. So once we cross the line, you know why you're here and I know why we're here. So, you know, mm. let's just get it on and, and see who's... Um, you know, as they say, so I want to see whose locals greater, you know, mm. and um, and so I, I enjoyed that element of the contest. Um, and then uh, actually, Ando helped us out a bit in terms of, hey, how about you use your feet and um, <laughs> punch through some of the gaps rather than trying to run through and over people. OK, your, your best teammates, for whatever reason, name mm. them and, and why. Uh, Ali, Ali was a good teammate because uh, I had him, oh, he was my roommate constantly uh, for a, a big chunk of the time I was at the Warriors. Um, I don't know why they put us together, but um, I, I think I was supposed to watch his snack food intake, but <laughs> ended up joining him and we started a yucca club. And so, you know, we were playing cards instead of drinking. See, obviously, Joe, like I say, for the obvious reasons, um, Joe was, he was up there. He was the go-to guy, but, you know, he was a real cool teammate. Who were the pests, Jess? Who were the pests? Piss. Remember Nat Wood? Nat Wood was a real prankster. And, man, he did some funny ass stuff. He'd break into people's houses in there, yeah. turn off lights and turn on showers. Um, dare I say it, Owen had this funny, he was a bit of a prankster, eh? Mm. Let's just say everyone had a hotel room and a bathroom and, and Owen was never using his one. So, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, they, those kind of guys uh, are characters. Now, we mentioned your dad, Daniel Anderson, before having you as one of his favourite props of all time. I want to know who your favourite prop rotation would be. Um, so mm. you're, you're, you're coaching this one, so you've got four props, and it's not just your era. Mm. It could be with all the eras uh, that you have seen through the Warrior tenure. Wow, that's a big question, Mons. It, um, that's, that's probably too massive. Uh, I, I'd preface it by saying it depends on what era and what rules we're playing by. Um, 
because man, the shoulder charge was was Ooh. was something that I and I already know you're talking about when you say that. Yeah, yeah. So Benny Mats. Exactly. So Benny Mats would would have to be there. Is he a second row or a prop? I don't know. You decide, Mods. But um, well, it's now your turn to decide. In their prime. In their prime. Oh, Come on, too many questions, Jess. Just no, because because I'm thinking, do you, do you pick Quinton Pongia because he's just ferocious, um, or, or, or do you go with Joe Vangana because he, he basically can run through any forward. So that's game. two, two more, two more. Um, man, who we got? Who are the other options? But, well, this this Steve Price and Ruben Wookie, eh? So they got runs on the board, so you'd have okay. to go with them. Okay, so you went with all the old guys. Old guys, all good. But my you... I'd have to try and fit Ficker in there somewhere. Because mm. there's a guy that could score from literally anywhere. Do you remember that time against Newcastle, he actually ruptured his spleen? Now, rupturing your spleen is something that's done uh, in a car accident. Uh, I've never seen it happen before in the field, but we know how explosive and how strong he is. Mm. Uh, do you remember that game well against Newcastle? You know, at Smart Stadium? What I remember is afterwards, and he, he you know, obviously he had to come off the field, and he's like, going to be all right? He goes, yeah, I'll just got to go home and sleep it off. I'll be all right. Yeah. And then, you know, we had that whole big thing um, come out that day. Actually, he's in hospital and yeah. he's not doing too well. And I was like, oh, wow. Um, the amount of guys he ran over that day, too, was amazing. But, um, yeah, the fact that, that he did that to the team that ultimately won the grand final, um, that speaks volumes to you, just how powerful Ficker was. Um, there would probably never be another kid like him, 18, uh, coming into grade and just owning some of the, mm. the prop forwards that were uh, that were in grade at the moment at the time. Jerry, you're still part of the club. Uh, mm. um, is that something you, you love to do, especially being a guy who's contributed on the field, already off the field in, in many um, positions as a manager, um, as uh, a well welfare officer? Um, is that something you think you'll do for a long period of time? It's a, bit, a little bit like the league career months. You sort of um, just try and be useful and before you know it, the years in the calendar years are ticking. Now I'm a granddad and I'm thinking, oh, she's can I do this? And how much longer can I? But um, I'll do it as long as I'm useful and as long as the players and the, and the staff feel I can contribute something, then, then you know, it's, um, it's never been about the money. It's just more about uh, trying to make a difference. Jess, once a warrior, always a warrior. When we think about the, the amount of world-class talent we've had in the propping stocks, uh, you are right up the top, man. So thank you for your time. Uh, too, uh, you're too kind, Monster. Just had a good team and, and a, a couple of good dummy halves.